Hello, my little beauties. It's David Connolly, the web developer extraordinaire, with a very shiny looking face today, but I can assure you it's just the light, you know. Um, so, begun. The inshitification has. Over the last couple of years, some of us have enjoyed using systems like ChatGPT, Claude, and others to do all sorts of amazing things with AI. Now, those of us who have been around the block, we've seen this type of thing before. We knew what was coming up. They caught us out with all of the cloud. Do you remember? The cloud. Not so long ago, everybody was saying, oh, you'll save a fortune. Traditional hosting is dead. And of course, there was only one or two voices that went the other way. Only one or two voices that said, actually, Maybe you should stick with shared hosting, but go with shared hosts who have really fast processors and really great amount, great amounts of RAM that get allocated to the accounts. Oh, oh, who in their right mind would say such a crazy thing? Anyway, if you are in any way involved with something like web development or software development, you will know that there's no shortage of horror stories where developers have woken up to bills for $90,000, prices like that, from the likes of Firebase and other cloud providers. So, I think it's safe to say we had a nagging feeling that the honeymoon period would soon be over. Today, I am declaring that the honeymoon period is over. I've just been on Claude, that's uh, Sonnet 3.5, I believe. And I've noticed day by day, and I'm sure this is a daily thing, the walls are closing in. And what happened is, I'm a paying customer, and when you first got the thing, you could talk to it for ages and ages and ages. And after about four hours, it would say, look, you're using a lot of resources, can you ease off? And that was fair enough. But then the walls moved in and in and in. It got to the stage where you could sit and use it for maybe two or three hours. And then it would say you are out of messages until 10 o'clock tonight. You'd come back, get another few hours, and it was fair enough. Gradually, the walls kept on moving in. Now, it's at the stage where, for me, it's virtually unusable. I had a very short conversation there. I was trying to get a hand with some stuff and I was trying to paste in about a hundred lines of console log messages. Nothing at all. That's nothing. And I just tried to paste in a hundred lines and Claude is now saying, oh, your message is too long. Uh, please start another conversation. So, fine, I'll start another conversation. Let's stop using these AI providers because I can see how this is going and I'm not going to get caught out. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm going to be doing, actually, if you stay tuned. But won't you do me a favour? Would somebody give me a thumbs up? Maybe a little comment? Or, I know it's an outrageous idea, but maybe, well, actually, don't bother subscribing. I think I've given up. Anyway. Just let me know that you're alive, won't you? All right. So what about ChatGPT? How are they doing? Well, this week, I'm not a, a paying ChatGPT customer, but I do use it. And this week, I noticed that when I was using it, a little thing appeared from nowhere, where every time I was adding, having a conversation, it said memory updated. And I was like, what does that mean? And I was, I, I ignored it. And then about three days later, it says, you have ran out of memory. Please clear your memory to continue. Like, what? So I had to clear all of my previous conversations. And it's basically the same process. Now, they're going to keep doing this regardless of whether you are paid or unpaid. For those of you who are optimists, I would say... Maybe there's some good news here because there's going to be a lot less competition. I reckon 90% of people, including developers, who are using these AI providers are now going to give up. They're going to see the inshitification 
They're going to see the lofty fees and just all of the hassle day by day, and they're going to just say, I've had enough. So the good news is, you've now got far less competition. Congratulations. The bad news is, this situation is only going to get worse and worse and worse. We're dealing with big, giant tech companies. And even though I am the web developer extraordinaire, they're not going to listen to the complaints of one guy, you know? So the honeymoon period is over. It's not going to be changing. Nothing I say is going to change any of it. It's just the way things are. And it's it's only going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. Hate to lay it on you. So, I will never offer a criticism without offering a solution. So I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing. And you can do whatever you want. So for me, I've made the decision that I'm happy to play around with these technologies for just live streaming and asking trivial questions and stuff like that. But when it comes to serious commercial web development, I'm not using them. I am not using them and I'm not going to get caught out by this process that is very clearly underway. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to run it locally. I am going to run it locally. You can do that. You can actually download things. I mean, the one I used is called GPT for all. That's the number four, actually. GPT for all, all one word. But there's others. There's other um, software packages you can download. Please educate the people and let us know in the comments here. Help me out. But there's others, and you can download them, you can have the little prompt screen and everything on your computer. And in fact, I've ran tests. I've, if you were a member of the private area for this channel, I ran tests where I built an API that talks to these things. And it's beautiful. But there's only one catch. The catch is that in order for this stuff to work, I'll just back off with my shiny face here. It really is the, the light, you know. Anyway, the catch is, in order for this to work in any sort of commercial or semi-serious situation, you're going to need a really, really, really powerful computer. And you're going to have to figure out how to connect it to the web. Something that I have figured out. But you might have to figure that out. Now, to give you an idea, I am running a Mac Mini M2 here. Here's, uh, here's my setup. So this is, we've got He-Man here. This is my mouse map with the house that I'm going to buy. Yep, vision boards are still here. I should breathe in. Hi, okay, I'm breathing in. So this is a little Mac Mini. <laughs> it's a little Mac Mini M2. Not a bad thing, right? Not bad. Let me tell you, when I was running those tests on the live stream and I had people watching and I was saying, right, I set it all up properly. I was like, right, I'm going to run a query. Here we go. And everybody's like, okay, I'd say submit. The computer would just crash. This thing never crashes. But it would completely crash and it, it was, funnily enough, not a blue screen. I think it was a white screen. But you never get that from Apple computers ever. And I had to restart the whole thing. Power off, power on. And it happened a few times. So the moral of the story is you're going to have to get a really, really, really powerful computer to handle this stuff. Now, you have two choices. I'm going to lay them out before you and I'm going to tell you the choice that I'm going for. The first choice is Go down the NVIDIA rabbit hole. Go buy a big powerful fan with heat sinks and all of that stuff and get on your hands and knees and spend 20 or 30 grand building a huge system that's probably going to be out of date by the time I've finished this sentence. But that's not for me. Even if 
the, this is how I see it, right? Even if you could afford the tens of thousands that it would cost to get a decent system up and running, hardware system, even if you could do that, I actually think that your electricity bills are probably going to go through the roof and call me stingy, but I just don't think it's uh, an economically sound policy. Therefore, my own policy is I'm going to be waiting on a Mac Mini with an M4 chip. Now, there's rumours that they're going to be releasing this any day now. I hope it happens. But they're bound to release something like that. And I think we are going to get an M4 chip. So when we get the Mac Mini with the M4, that will not be as powerful as your 30 grand NVIDIA setup. And you're probably going to have to build applications that have all sorts of throttling and stuff like that. You might have to even build features that say, please wait and, you know, figure out how to deal with bottlenecks and stuff. It's not going to be perfect, but I'm going to get myself a Mac Mini M4. I'm going to have it right over in the corner there. These things, I'm not clearly not sponsored, but these things are totally silent, very, very power efficient and actually perfect for this type of work. They can function as servers. So it's going to be a Mac Mini M4. Now, when these things come out, there's going to be a variety of different price points. You're going to see them at maybe seven, eight hundred dollars. Then they'll have one at about twelve hundred dollars and so on, all the way up the scale. They're going to have one that costs about two and a half grand that nobody's going to buy. The kind of thing that you and I would normally look at and say, why bother with that? Let's get the 700 quid one, right? Well, I'm buying the expensive one. Whatever they put out in terms of RAM and processors and graphics and all the rest of it, whatever is the extreme end of the most expensive thing that they can dish out, and I'm predicting it will be about two and a half thousand dollars. Whatever it is, buy it. At least that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be buying the most souped up Mac Mini that money can buy. I'm going to chuck it over that table and I'm going to say adios to chat GPT, Anthropic and all of the other usual suspects. Take it from me, folks. Begun the enshittification has and the honeymoon period is over. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. You know, give me a hand. All right. See you later.